Well, I live up ahead, them voting beef sharers. I'd have had a thousand tapes. We must have you in luck, cause up your sleep, you got a brand of magic never fails. You got the power in your corner now, some heavy ammunition in your camp. You got some punch, pizzazz, yeah! When house, all you gotta do is rub that lamp. And I'll say, Mr. Alancer, what will your pleasure be? Yeah, heard and saw him singing, and now he's right here, James Monroe Iglehart, Tony Award winning actor and performer at NJ Pack show, Great American Songbook, airing with our partners at NJ PBS in the spring. Good to see you, James. Glad to be here, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. So, so I say Aladdin, you say? <laughs> Best experience of my life. Because? You know, uh, a lot of people have dreams. A lot of people um, hope to do things. And my dream actually came true. I was 17 years old and my mom took me to see Aladdin when I was a kid. And I leaned over after hearing friend like me with the legendary Robin Williams. And I said, I wish someday to do something just like that. And then in 2014, I was able to do that. I was able to originate my version of the genie on Broadway and sing that song. And it just, it changed my life completely. You were the genie. Yes, I was the original. There's, there's a couple genies. There's the original, which is Robin Williams, and the first uh, genie on Broadway is uh, yours truly. You know, I, I can't even imagine when you say change your life. I can't even imagine how much or in what ways. Give us a little glimpse of that. You know, it, it, it was crazy. I, I will say this. So um, there was a, a young man who worked for Disney. Uh, I am missing his name right now, and I feel really bad about that. We were outside underneath the marquee. And it was right before we got into uh, rehearsals, uh, tech rehearsals into Aladdin. And he looks at me and he says, are you enjoying this? And I said, yeah. And he was like, no, no, I mean, standing under this marquee. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, get used to this. I was like, why? He goes, because this will never happen again. There will never be a time where you will stand under this marquee and no one will know who you are. Right now, people are just walking past. They have no idea. He goes, after we open, when you stand under this marquee, this quiet that you feel will never happen again. And it never has. Whenever I've gone to the New Amsterdam Theater to see my friends or to see Aladdin again or just to, because the Disney uh, offices, Disney theatrical offices up there, whenever I've walked under that marquee, someone has recognized me. It has changed my life completely. I also, I, I make a joke that before Aladdin, everybody mispronounced my name. After Aladdin, about 80% of people can actually figure out how to say it now. It was, it's, it, it's that great thing it. of like, you know, spending 40 years of your life going, no, it's Iglehart, it's Iglehart. And they go, oh yeah, Iglehart. And then after Aladdin, they're like, hey, that's Iglehart. I'm like, damn, everybody know my that's name. That's Iglehart the genie. Exactly. But hold on, wait a minute. But then you, you, we'll go back to the Great American Songbook in a second. But, 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 then, but then you do Hamilton. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, that other little show. <laughs> that other little show. The, the great thing about, the funny thing about it is most people don't know is that I've, I've been a part, I was a part of Hamilton from the very beginning. I literally started Hamilton and Aladdin around the same time. I've been a part of a group called Freestyle Love Supreme, which uh, Tommy Kale, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and v Anthony Vinicielli created, which is a hip-hop improvisational group. I'm a part of that group. And while he was, while Lin was working on In the Heights, he told us about this new project called Hamilton. So I was there from the very beginning, and I was at the first Lincoln Center concert playing Mulligan, the first person to play Mulligan in public, I was that guy. And then I had a chance to uh, either go with Hamilton for it's like they were doing some readings or go with this Aladdin thing. And I chose the Aladdin thing. I said, well, let me let me see where this goes. And they were like, we totally understand, man. Do your thing. And I went off and never in a million years did I think I'd be able to come back to the to the Hamilton family. But I got a call and I was like, well, it's time. And I got to go back to that show as it was the juggernaut that it was. And it was a lot of fun to be back with to be back with the family. Let me ask you this. You talk about your role and, and the extraordinary work that you did in Aladdin and then Hamilton. And then we're talking about the NJ Pack series. And this is at New Jersey Performing Arts Center, a great American songbook, a part of the NJ PBS, the great public television station in New Jersey. Um, I'm curious about this. You're a kid growing up where? I'm a kid growing up in Hayward, California, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. I heard a rumor that PBS was part of your world and potentially it was the electric, electric company? 
Oh yes, uh, between between the Electric Company and uh, great, great performances, I was stuck on PBS. <laughs> you were a PBS kid. I was a PBS kid. I was I was I was that kid who was watching PBS. It was everything from from Sesame Street to Electric Company to the Bloodhound Gang to uh, just any, anything that came on to Discovery. You know, all the animal shows that came on. I was on PBS because I just like I liked just having what my wife likes to call useless information in my head, and I just it, oh. uh, PBS had it. Don't get me wrong. Well, no, I, no, hold on one second. No, no, you know that you know that person who you're sitting, you know, before Google, there was PBS. You know that person when you sit at a table and someone asks a stupid question and they happen to know the answer? I know it because I was watching PBS. So yeah. I, I, I loved stuff. it. It was, it was very important stuff because I'm the I was the look how about this I was the brother with the ladies who never had, who never didn't have something to talk about so PBS saved my life so I love it was that. it was just great to be able to watch these different things and when Electric Company came on Sesame Street was one thing but Electric Company was cool I mean don't get me wrong Sesame Street was cool but it was Electric you know Company you learned cool. your ABCs but there was another level of cool who starred Electric Company oh my gosh uh, Rita Moreno and of course Morgan Freeman. So Morgan Freeman is the great Morgan Freeman, but uh, Rita Moreno yeah. together, they, okay, I'm sorry. Nobody uh, knew, no, nobody knew phone. what they were looking at the time. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Hey, listen, um, the Amer Great American Songbook, put that in perspective for us, why does it matter so much? As a Sinatra, growing up in my house, it was, I said this on another show, it was opera on Saturdays, then Sinatra, or vice versa, back and forth. But it was always Sinatra, the Great American Songbook. Part, he's part of it. Yeah. Why does it matter? It matters because the Great American Songbook, as a term, has always been used for one style or certain styles of music. The Great American Songbook, if you're really talking about it, you're talking about all the music that was created in America. And that includes Frank Sinatra, but that also includes Stevie Wonder, that also includes Barry White, that includes Parliament Funkadelic, that includes The Time, Prince, Michael Jackson, musicals, that includes hip hop, Run DMC, Curtis Blow, LL Cool J, all the way to um, even in WA, I mean, in, in the American songbook, the music that was created in this country is involved in that songbook. And I'm so glad I get to be a part of it because the American songbook that I saw when I would watch PBS was the uh, the great musicals of the time, whether they were uh, Rogers and ha Rogers and Hart, Rogers and Hammerstein, whether it was Stephen Sondheim, and then, but but we we never really got into the things that I was listening to when I saw the American Songbook. So when I got a chance, I wanted to put that in there, and that was the Barry Whites, that was the Morris Day and the Times, that was uh, the Hamilton musicals, the Disney stuff, and the hip hop that I grew up with. So it's important because if you're going to talk about that term, American Songbook, we have to talk about all of it, which is jazz, R&B, funk, hip hop, all of this stuff, rock, everything. And now you're on PBS. Yes. See, now you're on NJPBS. You watched it as a kid out in California. And now you're on the greatest public television station around. And this is including and our honestly, friends at WNET in New York, but NJPBS. NJPBS. How great is that? It's it's fantastic. It's 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 a it's a it's also a dream come true. And the great thing is, I've been honored to be a part of PBS before. Uh, when I was a part of the Tony Award winning musical Memphis, we were part of great performances. I was also a part of the brand new cast of The Electric Company, and I got to sing a song called Silent E. So to be a part of PBS again, and this time with the American Songbook, I feel nothing but blessings, and I feel like. It, it's it's a wonder when I when they say that wishes can come true I do mean that you know my my show has a song and it was like a dream a w a dream is a wish your heart makes and this was that dream to to do be able to do this be able to perform for a living and be at this level and you know to be on NJPBS is fantastic yeah you know I, I heard I gotta let you go but I heard no that as as a genie one of your top wishes was. <sighs> I really wish Steve Adubato would would bring me on and interview me. Is that you know, yeah? You know, is that fake news or no? That, no, no, not not in the slightest. Because I mean, you there didn't are even so, know who I was. Listen, listen. It's, it's not about knowing who you are. It's about knowing the power that a person can have. It's about looking at a person and seeing the integrity just by the tie that they wear. Steve, it's about being able to be on someone's show who gives the people what they want. And you knew that they wanted American Songbook at NJ Pack, and you knew that the guy to give it to you was me. So it was. It was, it, it was one of those it was one of those moments that it had 
to happen. You and I meeting was destined to happen. And this moment was destined. And these fans who are watching it now are not only going to enjoy my show, but seeing your shining face is going to make them turn this thing on again to watch you interview someone else. This was meant to happen. You've done this before. <laughs> we are timeless, sir. We are time. This is we are timeless, sir. This is a show. The PBS doesn't know it. This could be something. It, it could be something. And my producer is telling me, Steve, enough about you. We got to go. Um, <laughs> James Monroe. James Monroe. I go hard. Tony Award-winning actor, uh, performer. NJ Pack. Great American Songbook airing on NJ PBS. Hey, cannot thank you enough, James. You honor us by being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Honored to be here. Thank you, man. Have you got day. it. We'll be right back. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. The Russell Berry Foundation. Hackensack Meridian Health. TD Bank. NJM Insurance Group. Veolia. The Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. And by New Jersey Sharing Network. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe and by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. Many of New Jersey's children have been affected by COVID-19, but now that there is a safe and effective vaccine available for children ages 12 and older, you can help make COVID-19 history by getting yourself and your child vaccinated. Let's end this pandemic together and help all children get back to being kids. Visit HagensackMeridianHealth.org slash COVID-19 to learn more or to schedule a vaccine appointment today.